Good morning, everyone. It's Joker, and today we are back with another slime video. And I wanted to get this team building guide out of the way before we actually jump into the showcases for Ainz and Rimuru. So the showcase for Ainz will come out tomorrow. The showcase for Rimuru will come out on Sunday morning. So we've got three videos today and then video, video for the showcases. Nabes will come later on down the line. But for people who are just coming into the Overlord Club and not sure how to really run a team, this is the video for you. Because I'm going to go over what they do very briefly and then explain why some units work and some units do not work. Alright, so as a brief introduction to the team, we're in beatdown battle. I'm going to very briefly explain how it runs in the fight. So we're on turn 3. Rimuru is raising our skill cap by 50 points every turn, so turn 2 is 150, turn 3 now it's 200. We've got a nice hand of greens, and that's what we're focused on right here. So we're going to use Nabe to change that into a full hand of greens. Awesome. We're going to use the weakness strike and live mode and protection gauge increase right here, which also is a tiny heal. And now we're going to send another full hand of greens, and Rimuru will be able to reset all of those skills that we just used back to its base cost. And this is how you want this team to run. Full hands of greens and good, good buffs on Ainz to be your damage dealer. Shizuka's going to be a great unit here. We've got Dark Millum in the back to do our alt buff and attack buff. And then Mirai is also in the back for the future hand of greens as well, in case things like this happen, which is kind of unfortunate. But... That's how you want to go. In order to get around this turn, um, we're going to have to do some funky things. So, let's do the blue orb change. Boom. Let's do this orb change, because it'll change the Ein's orb. And then we can get uh, Shizuka out of here after we use these two skills. Boom. So we're always increasing our skill cost, we're always getting a lot of points, which means that we can use like six or seven skills here and not really have to worry about it. So Milan comes in, she's going to convert this one. We've got 75 points left, let's bring Mirai in. And let's guarantee the next hand is greens, and let's use uh, some extra protection gauge. And we're looking pretty good. We're looking pretty good here. Let's go ahead and uh, reset everything. Yeah, reset everything here. And then we'll go ahead and nuke. And then I think after this, we'll move on. Because this is essentially what you want to do. Full hands of greens, lots of big time buffs, and you don't look back until turn 8 when you say, please disappear from my sight, Leon. Okay, so brief overview. Protector Rimuru raises your skill cap, which means you can hold more and more skill points, which means you want orbs that give you a lot of skill points. His actual skill... Stacks element attack on anybody, so that's very generic. No matter who you bring, going to get some sort of elemental attack buff. And then he's buffing green orbs, soul of skills, skill point increase by 100. So every time you use Rimuru, any green orb will give you more skill points. Which goes well with his whole stacking skill cap. So you're focusing on a green orb team. Green orb changers or units that buff green orbs in some way, shape, or form. And then also, he is resetting skill costs. So every time you use a skill from a battle unit, it goes up by 20 points. So if you use Guy, and you use his big time alt buff, it goes from 80 to 100, right? And then it can't go any higher than 100. But if you were to use Rimuru's skill to reset that, it would go back down to 80. And so using that for, you know, lower cost skills that cost 25 points or 40 points... Those can keep being very, very cheap, no matter how often you use them, as long as you keep resetting their costs, which means you can use a lot of skills very, very often, because you're going to have a lot more skill points, and you're going to be able to hold a lot more skill points. So Rimuru is focused on a green team. Ainz, for his part, is the DPS unit. He's giving himself a magic buff, he's giving himself crit alongside the other Stern of Spirit characters, and he's also buffing green orb protection gauge which means that it will be easier to get rimuru up and active with every green orb that you send so already he's working well with the team nabe is a dedicated green orb changer she changes two blues to two greens and then she changes two special orbs to two greens so she's got a lot of the orb changing covered now we know 
that in the future we are going to get Shaltier and Albedo and a mystery third unit, whoever that may be. We don't actually know yet because they're holding it very close to the chest. So we can assume that these two units will work very well alongside green orbs. Probably a triple orb change to green. Um, somewhere in there is going to be like an alt swap to green, maybe a triple alt swap. Because we're on a stacking team, we're going to go for quite a while and it's going to be very easy to get alts with this team. So we can expect that's what they're going to do alongside doing some massive kind of support to help Ainz do big bone daddy damage. But they're not here yet. So you know what? We're not going to really include them. So if you're going to build this team and you have this, your best options will be units that can green orb change and give additional buffs. Now the unit that most fits that is going to be Shizuka from the Idolmaster collab. Because she's got her special live mode buff, which for every green orb you send, you get an extra 2% attack. And that stacks forever. So you can get, you know, in theory, 12% attack every single turn if you send 6 green orbs. She's also lowering alt resistance by 10% every single time, which is great because that's, you know, another buff. It's a debuff technically, but it stacks as well. Her second skill stacks Weakness Strike, which if you're using Ainz against a light unit, Weakness Strike means you do more damage against them, and that goes forever as well. And you know what's really good is that both these costs are 25 points, and if you use Reamer to reset, they will only ever be 25 points. So she is a fantastic option to bring on this team to help support Bone Daddy Ainz. Another really good unit who's a bit older is Dark Millum. Dark Millum has an alt buff, which helps everybody do more damage on their alt. And if she is skill fused, which, you know, maybe not everybody has access to, but some people will, she's giving all dark allies 25% attack. Well, Ainz is dark, so he gets 25% alongside the 70% alt buff on his alt. Also, she's orb changing to greens, so she is another fantastic unit to bring on this team. Now, for a third unit, there are a number of options you can do. So you could, in theory, bring Autogram Lumi. Permanent alt damage, right? That's pretty good. She doesn't really do anything else. She's got a protection trait for turn one, two, and three, but uh, she's not really necessary. So she can be skipped. Another unit that you could bring to help this team out would be Dark Shinsha, who's got a dark buff and her second skill is uh, lowering crit resistance, which stacks and also gives orbs extra skill points. That skill... I mean, you can take it or leave it. It stacks kind of slowly because it's like 5% crit resistance down every time. And you're already getting so many skill points from Rimuru that you don't really need anything else. It's useful, but sure, why not? But as far as free-to-play units go, there are actually a number of good options. The free-to-play Subasa can be useful if she's, you know, just he there for an orb change because she, she has the same orb change as Dark Millum. You could bring free-to-play Trya, who is pretty much a god for green orbs on any team you put her on. She's essentially handling the same duties that Nabe is, but in a less restrictive way, almost. And then one of the best free-to-play units, if not the best, is Dark Isis, because she has the green, the blue to green orb change that Nabe does, but she also has a 50% gauge increase on all green orbs. So for three turns, all greens are going to give you 50% extra protection, skill point, and alt gauge. And that will stack alongside Ides' protection gauge buff and Rimuru's skill point buff. So having her alongside these two means that you're pretty much set. And because, you know, you're stacking element damage, Ainz just has his magic buff and guaranteed crit, Shizuka has the stacking everything that she's doing, and Milam has the alt buff and dark damage, this is a very good team. This is a very good team. In fact, you could probably take off Nabe and you could put Trya in here and it would still run quite well because you have orb change, orb change, orb change, buff, 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 all right? So you're looking to build a team that has a lot of green orb changing to get full hands of greens, which means you can cycle Rimuru faster. And then you're also looking for units that are able to support Ainz and his duty of damage dealing uh, potential. So if you don't have Dark Millum, you need an alt buffer. You could bring Space Shinsho if you wanted. She's got a 70% alt buff, and she you, she can work. She was not quite as versatile as Dark Millum, but she she can do. Um, you could bring... Let's see, where where is she? Uh, let's see, Wind Millum. 
She's also got a 70% alt buff. Her second skill isn't so great. Water Shuna also has an alt buff wherever she is, but she's focused on blue orbs. You don't really want blue orbs on this team. So she is kind of like, eh, she's okay. And then a lot of the other alt buffers that we've received so far, Guy and Megamine, they're, and, and even Jean, they're meant for blue stacking teams. So Jean is especially expensive on this team. I would not bring her. Um, her second skill is only buffing very specific things. <clears throat> So maybe not the best option. Even the New Year's units, they're focused on physical. Physical, crit, and synergy, which you don't want to do synergy damage here because the beatdown battle boss has resistance. So not the best options. Christmas Shuna is built for a green team, but again, her second skill is synergy. You don't want that. So maybe not the best time to bring her. You could bring Mirai, right? She's also got the live mode. She's got a guaranteed future hand of green uh, skill, which means that realistically you don't need much orb changing after turn two if you can always have this active and always keep it at its base cost by having Rimuru resetting it every single turn. She is definitely an option that you could do. Um, who else could you bring? I mean, you could bring Rain. She's also on the Stern of Spirit category. She has essentially the same green buff that Isis does, but she's got a little tiny magic buff and, you know, it's not as good as Ainz's magic buff. So I'm not too big on bringing rain, but you can definitely do it if you lack somebody who has that green buff because you don't have access to Isis because you're a new player and you pulled rain from your summons because she's featured. You can work with her. Um, the hero 2.0, she has an alt swap ability, so it means that you can send like take Ainz's alt away and change it to a green orb and therefore you can keep sending six hands of greens. It does make things very nice. That's why I expect either Shoutier or Albedo or the mystery third unit to do that kind of ability, but in a much wider, broader sense. Her second skill is a debuff slash orb damage buff. It's okay. Um, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but she's she's gonna be a year old in a couple months or so. So she's she's uh she's kind of getting power crept out. But then after that, you just have a bunch of free to play units that are focused on blues, blue, blue. You can bring Yom if you want, but if you're going to run Vengeance, you might as well just run the Vengeance team. He doesn't really serve too much purpose here. Uh, Subasa again, is an option. Uh, Diablo, limited to the New Year's team. Don't bring him. Kleesh is a blue unit. Don't bring her. Ranga is an orange unit. Don't bring him. So options are actually more limited than not for green teams, at least for good support units right now. But again, this is also assuming that you are not pulling for Shoutier, and you're not pulling for Albedo when they appear in the future, because between them, I think uh, I think this team looks pretty formidable right here, and even you could probably get rid of Isis and put uh, Shizuka here, and you'd look probably pretty good. But again, what you're looking for is units that have green orb changes and buffs to help Ainz do damage. Another unit that could be useful if you already have free-to-play Isis, right? So, or you don't have free-to-play Isis, and you have Nabe instead. You could bring the free-to-play Misery, Space Misery. She's physical, but she is also buffing green orbs by 35%, and she has a heal. So in case you're taking a little bit too much damage, you she can get you out of a tight spot in case someone's looking real low, while still maintaining the ability to buff green orbs. And I think it's 35%, but also 15% damage on greens. So it's not the straight 50 that Isis is giving, but she can still work, and she's a, a she's a viable free-to-play option for this team. Uh, apart from that, uh, it's like you have free-to-play Aaron, you have free-to-play Sufia that are also orange orb changers. If you need a dedicated orange orb converter, uh, you could definitely use them. There is the Water Soe, who is also an orange orb changer, and also has an attack debuff and defense up. I don't know how useful that would be on this team, but it also is an option. Wind Lumi is another orb changer. She's a healer as well, so also able to get you out of those tight spots. Butler Veldora, orb changes, orange to orange to green. Um let's see. Mm, yeah, no, I think, I mean, Space Velzard technically is a blue orb changer, but Nabe's taking care of that for you, so I wouldn't really recommend her too highly. But overall, I think even though this team only has 
three of the new units. I think it runs exceptionally well, and it's going to run even better when we get these two and that mystery third unit. And once that happens, I mean, Eins is going to do like 20 million damage or something like that. Easy. Free and easy, probably. And even if this third unit ends up being crap, you put um, Shizuka on there, and as long as one of these units has like an orb change and an alt convert and like one big buff, one big buff, and you have all this going on, we're going to look pretty good. But that's my little guide on how you should be looking to build your Overlord Stern of Spirit team. Let me know if you have any comments or questions down below. But that's it for me. Take it easy, guys, and I'll see you all later.